Hello everybody, it's me Lady B. I am, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited about what God is doing in my life. I'm excited about what God is doing in the lives of so many people that I know. I'm just, you know, a lot of times when we talk about what God is doing, we are referring to material things, but I'm just excited that the people that God has allowed me to minister to, you know, not even just the local people that I'm physically ministering to, but even by way of this YouTube channel, the people that are being blessed and that are subscribing. I'm just so humbled and I am so blessed and I'm, I'm just so grateful to the Lord that he would choose me. And I am grateful to the Lord that you would choose me, that you would give me a few minutes of your time. I want to thank you for every comment, for every subscriber. Um, thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. I, I appreciate you so much. I believe that we are living in, I heard Bishop Iona Locke say one time, the last of the last of the last days. And I would like to invite you to join me. I'm going to start a teaching on answering that question. Are we in the end times? Are we in the last days? And I'm going to start that uh, on tomorrow. Uh, the first recording is going to be at four o'clock. So I would like to invite you to come and join me in that. But I have just made up my mind. It's like God has put fire in my feet to do what God has called me to do. And I know that I am called to teach and exhort and, and, and to preach the word of God. And I must do what God says. And my whole purpose is to motivate you, to encourage you to go and do what God has called you to do because time is winding up. And so the Lord impressed upon my heart to um, start reading through the Bible again. And so I, um, I started doing that and so many thoughts came to me. So I want to take the opportunity every once in a while to share some of the things that I feel like the Lord gave me. So today I want to share out of the book of Judges. And we're going to start at um, verse 1 of chapter 3. It says, Now, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least, such as before knew nothing thereof, namely five lords of the Philistines and of the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath, and they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the head of Moses, by the hand of Moses, I'm sorry. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hittites and Amorites and Perizzites and the Hivites and Jebusites. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and forgot the Lord their God, and served Balaam and the groves. Now, when we look at this scripture, something comes to me. Um, two things came to me. I had two thoughts with this text. First of all, oftentimes what we're going through, it is the purpose of God. Every difficulty, every trial is not just the enemy attacking us. Sometimes it's God allowing the enemy to attack us or God allowing difficulty to come because he's striving. His goal is to mature us, to develop us. And as we look in this text, God um, did not drive out the Canaanites out of the promised land, not, not, not all of it. And he did that because the younger generation, they didn't know war and they had to learn how to fight. And so God is allowing things to come into our lives because his goal is to mature us, to stretch us, to strengthen us, to train us, to prepare us. And oftentimes we don't like that. We don't want to be prepared. We don't want hard times. We don't want difficulties. We don't want challenges. We want everything to be sweet and good and easy and, and nice and conforming and whatever it is. And that's not how it goes. And look at what the young people did. And this was the younger generation. 
instead of them obeying the commandment of Moses, obeying the commandment of Joshua, obeying the command of God to not dwell in this land with people that would cause them to trip up. Instead of them fighting, they began to intermingle. They began to marry these women and these sons, what God had told them not to do. And I don't know about you, but I've been guilty of this. When I didn't want to fight, I became into allegiance with people that I know God told me, uh-uh, that's not what they're in your life for. And it was disastrous. And I'm here to tell you now, every difficulty that comes into your life, don't rebuke that. Ask God, God, why is this going on in my life? What's the plan? How do you plan to be glorified? And then watch out for the warnings. Remember when God sends something, he will never give us any, 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 any leeway to disobey his word. God never gives us permission to disobey his word. I was in a, a women's ministry and two of the ladies were saying that God led them to marry their husbands who were not saved. And I said to them, but the Bible says we're not supposed to be unequally yoked. And they said, I know what the Bible said, but I also know what God told me. Well, needless to say, things did not end well for them. And here we are with the children of Israel, this younger generation that even though they may not have gone to war, they had seen their fathers and their grandfathers fight and they had seen the miracles of God. And yet when it was their turn to stand up and, and to fight and to defend and to take possession, they chose to conform. They chose to be a part. They chose to marry. And I want to challenge you in this time that we're living in. This is a very difficult time for believers because less and less, um, how do I want to say this? It is becoming um, unpopular to be a Christian. It is becoming unpopular to read your Bible in public and to share the gospel. It's becoming um, very unpopular and our nation is less and less what you would consider a Christian nation. And so, but God is saying to us, I'm allowing this to teach you how to fight because you haven't been fighting in the past. Let's be honest. We've been sitting back complaining and whining and all those things. And I'm generalizing. I'm not saying all of us have done that, but many of us have been guilty of that. And so God is saying, I'm turning up the fire a little bit because you're too comfortable, right? Or maybe turning down the temperature a little bit. So let, let it be cold. Let it be chilly because you're too comfortable. But at the end of the day, God wants us to be warriors. He wants us to fight. And the fight is not so we can say, I got this and I got this house and I got this car. No, the fight is for us to bear fruit. The fight is so that we can win as many souls as we can before Jesus comes back. But what we don't want to do, because I believe that what God has assigned to us, that's our promised land. And God is going to give us the harvest of that land. It could just be one person. Your land could just be one person. Your land might be a church where you're the pastor and you have three faithful, solidly saved people. Then that's your harvest. But what happens? God promises us something. But we say, God, I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to do what I want to do. And then God gets angry and then he has to spank us. And some of these things that we're going through is because God has had to discipline us because we have been stubborn and disobedient. And so I just want to challenge us on today. When we look at this chapter, God allowed some difficulties to come so that they would be effective in battle. Remember what Paul said, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And because we're not familiar in battle, we're not comfortable in battle. We're dealing in the flesh, we're fighting in the flesh, and we're binding and yoking up in the flesh. My husband preached an awesome message on today. Many of us, things get difficult. What do we do? We go back to the world. We start smoking and drinking and fornicating. Listen, I've never heard nothing so crazy in my life. My husband cheats on me. I go cheat on him. That is the 
Well, they told me I can't use that word dumb, but I think that's the dumbest thing. Two wrongs don't make a right, but this is what we were doing. Instead of Israel fighting the enemy to take what was promised to them, they became one with them. And listen, people of God, if we're going to be overcomers, if we're going to be victorious, we cannot be one with the world. We cannot follow the enemy and then expect the blessings of God. When we violate the laws of God, as we see in the scripture, God will be angry with us. And I know people nowadays don't want to teach about God being a God of justice. They just want to talk about law, love and peace. And you know, Jesus came to forgive us our sin. No, God is also God of holiness. And he's a just God. And we violate his commandments. He will deal with us accordingly. So I'm done. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. You may not have been fighting in the past. You may have been sitting on the, on the sidelines. Or maybe you're just now coming into ministry. You're just now waking up to the things of God. I'm here to tell you now, God is going to allow some difficulty in your life. Because that's the only way we're going to learn how to fight, how to stand, how to trust him, how to use the word of God, how to pray and be effective in our prayer. That is only going to come through some things being ruffled up, some dust being kicked up and, and those type of things. But when it gets difficult, don't go back to the world. Don't become friends with the enemy. Stand true to God and let him fight for you. Let him do the work for you. Please, I'm begging you. This is, we're in the final hours of a lot of things. Nothing else has to happen in prophecy before that trumpet blows. So no matter how hard it gets, don't look over the fence. Don't yoke up with the world. I don't care who's saying what. I don't care what preacher's doing what. I don't care what singer's doing what. Don't you do it. Because when you do it, you cut yourself off from the blessings and the mercy and the protection of God. So let's learn from Israel. God allowed this younger generation to learn how to war. And instead of them fighting the enemy, they married the enemy. And so this is kind of just a hodgepodge of thoughts, but I want to challenge you. If you're going through, God is trying to teach you how to fight. He's trying to strengthen your hands for battle because this is a warfare that we're in. And the war doesn't cease until God comes and calls us home, either through death or through the rapture. And so while we're here, let's be bold soldiers. Let's be mighty soldiers. Let's be committed soldiers. And let's not marry the world. We have enough problems. Let's not us individually be guilty of making God mad because when he promised us, he told us to get rid of something and we held on to it. We love that more than our obedience to God. Let's not be like that so that we can hold on to the blessings and the protection of God because we are in these last days and we need the Lord more than ever before. Again, thank you so much for commenting and sharing and subscribing. Thank you for joining me. Please pray for me. I, I, I really appreciate the comments. They don't even have to be positive. I don't care what you say because iron sharpens iron. Thank you so much. You be blessed. I'm praying for you in Jesus name. Bye-bye.